So in this video, we're going to try to understand refraction at a curved interface. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we have two media, so say one is has some refractive index N1, so uh, probably air, um, but maybe not. Maybe it's glass, maybe it's water. And then we've got a curved interface, and then we've got some other media N2. And this might be glass, water, might also be air, um, but the in general, N1 and N2 aren't going to be the same. So why do we care, first of all? Why do we care about refraction at a curved interface? Well, lenses are curved interfaces. And a thin lens is nothing but two curved interfaces right next to each other. And so if we understand refraction at a curved interface, and in particular, if we understand the transfer matrix, for that curved interface, which is what we're going to be working on in this video, then we understand everything there is to know uh, about that curved interface, at least for small angles, so when theta is small. So if I want the transfer matrix, all I need to do is send in some input ray and see what happens to the output ray. So I'm sending in some ray uh, with an angle, let's say theta n, and a height, uh, and let's say that the height we only care about the height at this interface. So let's say that this height is x in. So that's from this point to this point. And this ray is going to have some angle theta out. And let me uh, let me redraw it just so that it does actually have an angle theta out. Um, it's going to have some angle theta out with respect to the optical axis. And it's also going to have some height x out. But since we're only interested in what's happening at the interface, so right on this side and right on this side, the height doesn't change. So x out is just equal to x in. And so right off the bat, we've got half of our transfer matrix because we know that the transfer matrix um, just describes the relationship between x out and theta, x out theta out and x in theta in. And x out is just t11 times x in plus t12 times theta in. And we just said that x out is equal to x in, so clearly t12 has to be zero because theta in can be anything it wants to. So in order for this to always be valid, uh, t12 has to be zero and t11 has to be one. So if we're writing our transfer matrix, we're already halfway done. We've got one zero and then some t21 and some t22, which we need to figure out. So how do we figure out what theta out and theta in are? Because, I mean, this is a curved interface, right? So that's really weird. Um, and we don't really like that. that. That makes things incredibly difficult to deal with. So why don't we just say, well, I'm only interested in what happens right at this point. So right at the point um, x in, right at the height x in. And if we're only interested in what's happening very, very close to there, which, I mean, we are, right? We're we only care about um, the refraction at this point where this ray intersects the circle, then we can just treat this circle like a straight line. Because locally, that's what it looks like. For a single ray, um, a single ray will see a straight refractive interface. And we know how to deal with those. So let's redraw this problem. Um, we know that we're going to have a straight but slanted refractive interface because the circle is curved. So it's going to be differently slanted here and here and here and at some point it's going to have zero slant but let's say that it has some slant and that's defined by some angle let's call that uh, what theta theta r or something theta rotation and so depending on what theta r is whether it's positive or negative this could be anywhere on the curved refractive interface and uh, in case it wasn't explicit uh, we're assuming that this interface is circular uh, so interface is circular. The reason for that is just because, well, lenses are generally circular or spherical uh, on their uh, on their edges. And so we're most interested in figuring out how uh, circular refractive interfaces uh, will, will change things. And so now we can just redraw our ray diagram. So we've got some theta in, and we've got some theta out. And so how do we figure out, uh, and we've also got some x in. So let's say that uh, this was zero uh, and this height is x in. And you might say, well, wasn't 
wouldn't zero in general be far away so this starts to look like a starts to look like a curve and yeah yeah probably would um but we're actually only interested in the slope at this point of intersection so the length of this line isn't isn't actually going to going to turn out to matter so what do we do well we've got a ref we've got a refractive media or we've got a media with refractive index n1 and n2 so we're probably going to use snell's law um, which just says n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2 but we got to be careful because what exactly are um, theta 1 and theta 2 here because they're not just theta in and theta out because this interface is slanted a little um, the angles are with respect to the normal so with respect to the perpendicular line to the interface so this is theta 1 and this is theta 2 but that's not a huge problem because uh, theta 2 is just theta r plus theta out because uh, if theta r were 0 so if we didn't rotate the interface at all then theta out would just be equal to theta 2 and similarly uh, theta in which is this angle as well would be equal to theta 1 so we've rotated uh, we've rotated our whole system by theta r so that we now have theta 1 is just equal to theta r plus theta in. And theta r is just the amount that we're rotating uh, this interface by. So it's the slant at any given point. And we know in, also, since these are transfer matrices, we want everything to be linear. So we're going to make the small angle approximation. We're going to say eh, theta 1, theta 2, these are probably much less than uh, these are probably much less than one or much less than pi over two they're probably small so let's just say uh, Snell's law looks like this n1 theta 1 is equal to n2 theta 2 and okay uh, now we can plug in our values for theta 1 and theta 2 so theta 2 is just going to be theta r plus theta out um, and we get n1 times theta in plus theta r is equal to n2 theta out plus theta r or if we move stuff around a little bit um, theta out n2 times theta out is just equal to n1 times theta in plus n1 minus n2 times theta r so all that's left is for us to figure out what this theta r is because if we can figure out what that is then we we have our transfer matrix coefficients so what is theta r? What is the slant of a of a sphere at a particular at a particular height? Well, let's say that we're interested in this point. I don't know. Could be any point, and that height has a distance which we've called x in. So we've we've been implicitly assuming this whole time that the sphere was coincident with our optical axis. So optical axis or that the circle becomes flat at the optical axis. And this is going to be true for the vast majority of optical systems that you'll deal with. And so let's, let's continue making that assumption. So we're measuring the height from the optical axis, which we're assuming is the point where the uh, sphere has a slope of infinity. Well, let's just draw some, out, some stuff out real quick. Uh, we know that the sphere is going to have a certain radius associated with it, r, and we know that the, the tilt um, of this interface is just, is just this angle here, theta r, because as we rotate this guy, um, as this line becomes closer to the optical axis, uh, the tilt of this flat line um, is going to decrease or increase with respect to some vertical line, say. Um, so theta r is just equal to this angle right here. And just as a sanity check, uh, when our line is vertical, uh, we'd expect the tilt to be zero degrees because we're, we're analyzing a vertical interface or deviation from a vertical interface up here. And indeed, that corresponds to theta r being equal to zero degrees. So if theta r were equal to zero degrees, then we'd have... Uh, no deviation in our tilt so we just have a straight up and down line and so we can just use geometry to write uh, an expression for the tangent of theta r because uh, it's just equal to this value x in divided by 
uh, this value down here, which, um, what, what should we call that? So that's this distance. Uh, let's, let's call this r prime. r prime. Um, but if theta r is approximately zero, you, you know what's coming, um, then tangent of theta r is approximately theta r. And the other interesting thing is that this r prime uh, gets closer and closer to the actual value of r. So when theta r is equal to zero, then r prime is just equal to r. So we can approximate r prime uh, if the angle is sufficiently small as r. And so with all those approximations, we can rewrite, and there's, there's plenty of approximations you have to make in geometric optics to make your, your life sane. Um, we get that theta r is just equal to x in divided by r. And that's great. That, that means we finally have uh, an expression that we can plug back in here. So if we do that, we'll get n2 theta out is equal to n1 theta in plus n1 minus n2 times x in over r. And if we divide everything by n2, we'll just get our final equation for theta out. Theta out is just n1 over n2 times theta in plus n1 minus n2 over n2 times r times x in. And this is the equation that we needed because theta out, we recall for our transfer matrix, is just t21 times x in plus t22 times theta in. Theta in. And so this corresponds to this, this corresponds to this. And so this is our coefficient t21. This is our coefficient t22. So we're done. We, we have solved the transfer matrix. We can uh, gloriously write back in what t21 and t22 are. So he said this is just equal to n1 minus n2 over n2r. And this is just equal to n1 over n2. So this is our final transfer matrix. And let me just uh, erase this so we can see the n2. So this is our transfer matrix. So if we have some arbitrary ray that we send into a curved interface, we know that at this interface, we can describe it just with a transfer matrix. So for any ray height, and the ray height is measured with respect to Actually, let me redraw this so it's, uh, it's abundantly clear. And so the ray height is measured with respect to the optical axis, x in. And theta in, likewise, is also with respect to the optical axis. We now know, for a given x in and theta in, what the output ray will look like, x out and theta out. And so if we just apply this transfer matrix to our input on the left hand side of the interface then we'll just get the output ray now you might say well what about this distance here because this distance isn't zero and so you're you're comparing apples to oranges sort of you're you're saying that uh this distance doesn't matter and indeed i am we've assumed in this derivation that this distance this deviation is zero and so for a curved interface, that's a useful tidbit to keep in the in the back of your mind. When using these transfer matrices, we actually neglect any distance that's due to this curvature, any extra distance. And that's generally a good approximation. So I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. And if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.